everyone, it's Magenta Strongheart from Supply Frames Design Lab and we're stoked to be at CES 2020 with CEO Matt Johnson of Bear Conductives. Can't wait to talk all things smart materials. CES is a great opportunity to see how smart materials are impacting products that are upcoming in smart home, automotive, and wearables. We're here at the 3M booth and I'm excited to learn more about how Bear Conductive is changing the definition of smart materials and expanding it to new heights. Sure, so I wanted to bring you by the 3M booth because 3M is a global leader in adhesives and tapes. Um, a lot of people wrongly assume that adhesives and tapes aren't very excited, but we see this huge opportunity. You know, the ability to attach two different materials together and then add a layer of intelligence between them is super, super cool. And 3M has a bunch of technologies that allow them to control the performance of the adhesive in a way that you definitely would not expect. Should we go check out some of their samples? Yeah, let's go take a look. Awesome. I think when you think of tapes, you think of something simple, you know, people think of gift wrapping and things like that, but there is so much science that goes into adhesives and backings and tapes in general. You know, one, one such example here is some of the technology that goes into our VHB tapes. The other thing too is being foam. When you think about things that have different uh, TGs or different expansion rates, maybe windows and buildings as well too, okay, you have to allow for that expansion. If you used a rigid tape, a rigid material, those, those windows would shatter. There's a lot of science behind these adhesives, and what we're trying to do is to try to bring to life and rethink 3M when it comes to the science and technology between tapes and, and backings. And I think what's so cool about this is that the range of VHB tapes has so many different performances, right? And it's like a, it's engineered to provide a specific performance for different applications, and that is amazing. It's not a monolithic product. So we're here at the flexible and printed electronics section of CES. I think they have probably the most exciting capability to use smart materials. What are some of your favorite uh, examples of this that you've seen lately? So the examples that are in the forefront are um, energy harvesting, automotive, and wearables. Um, you know, the, the proposition is that you can create electronics through a printing process, so you end up with something really cost efficient, really thin, really easy to integrate into the environment. Right, makes sense. I'm excited to see some examples. Cool. Like Right now, our core project is for diabetic applications. Mm -hmm. we'll talk about uh, diabetic foot uh, neuropathy developing, so you can track your gait, analyze your gait, and then you, you can find out changes over time. Oh, it's okay. conductive inks on a substrate, mm -hmm. the pressure, and uh, we have a nine axis IMU in there. Okay. So we combine the data, yeah. but it's uh, mainly the pressure. So we try to translate this into other areas. Because what works for a car works as well for medical applications, for sports applications, uh, IoT, smart cities. So very easy or so simple principle to harvest energy by vibrating. Two electrodes on yep. top and, uh, and down and in between a piezoelectric yep. layer. And by, by tilting it changes the polarity and by vibrating you can produce an AC voltage. You can transfer it to DC and store it in, in a battery for off-grid applications. So as we continue the conversation of smart materials and sort of the landscape today, we wanted to catch up with Madison Maxey, founder of Lumia, an e-textile company. Thanks for talking with us today. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about your company? So Lumia designs and manufactures electronic textiles or soft circuits. They're basically soft flexible circuits that you can either bond or sew into soft goods. And are there any uh, sort of energy efficiency advantages to integrating an e-textile rather than having, I don't know, sensors on a substrate sandwiched between materials or that sort of thing? As electric vehicles become more popular, traditionally the way that you'll make a heating element for a car is you'll have a wire that's wrapped around. That wire has kind of a known resistance and you pump electricity through it, it radiates heat. Um, and the thing is that then you're just creating heat wherever the wire is and sometimes there's not a person there and you can't really change the efficiency. So using a technique like ours, you can modulate where the heat is, you can make it really efficient and for something like an EV where that battery needs to power not just the heater but also the car, uh, every little bit of efficiency counts. So we've made it to the Las Vegas Convention Center and we're here at DuPont to check out what they're up to. 
I wanted to take you to the DuPont booth because I think they're quite unique in that they have a lot of different business units that combine to create a real potential for innovation. So it's not just adhesives, it's not just materials, right? As we'll see, it's a combination of electrical conductors, plastics, um, materials that flow, materials they can print, and they put those together in really compelling ways that open up huge opportunities for innovation. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's do it. We make a lot of stuff that people don't even realize exist, right? So this, this is a great example. So this is a uh, battery for an electric vehicle. This is a kind of a tailor product, is a uh, gap filler, and it's thermally conductive. So it's applied like this, and then we're gonna have this module, and we pick it in and we push it down. When we push it down, this is going to flow and seal, displace all the air that is sitting there because this is your cooling plate. Now the batteries need to make contact with the cooling plate. If you have air, yeah. air is a thermal insulator. Yeah. So if you have air bubbles, the air, where the air bubbles are, the battery is gonna stay hot, it's not gonna yeah. cool down. Yeah. So you need to take the air out and you need to allow some thermal mass to go through so it gets to the cooling plate of the yeah. battery. So those are tailored to the application because the designs are different. Not everybody is going to have the same design. Yeah. This is, is applied science, is, is yeah. what you find in the market today. So we've seen a few different companies now using uh, smart materials in different ways, very different applications sort of across industries. What opportunities uh, specifically is Bear Conductive excited about in this field? I think the companies we've seen today show us that you can have very specific and powerful performance out of materials, right? You can engineer a lot of intelligence into the performance of the material itself. Um, what we haven't seen today is anyone doing anything with uh, active electronics in those materials. So we saw some shielding materials, uh, we saw some conductive tapes and conductive inks. Those are really cool but no one's using them actively yet, and that's what we want to bring. And in order to do that, you have to build a technology stack on top of the material itself. What industries, if any, do you feel like are really open to this opportunity and maybe leaders in making these, uh, these changes, whether it be you know, fashion, automotive, construction, or any others that come to mind? I think that the industries that are leading in using new materials in really elegant and efficient ways are primarily driven by cost. Um, the first would be aerospace. I think next you're starting to see that in automotive as well. Materials that are thermally insulative are really important. It costs energy to heat and cool a car. If you can reduce that amount of energy usage, you have more battery to drive you to your destination. I think that healthcare, specifically in wearables, are starting to do really great things with smart materials because there are real challenges to putting electronics on and near the body. The biggest opportunity area is smart buildings and smart home. These are really traditional industries. Buildings are still built with hammers and nails. I think they will benefit the most from the incorporation of new materials, and that's why that's such a focus for us. Thank you so much, Matt, for taking the time today to uh, talk us through a really in-depth view of the industry and the current landscape of smart materials. I had a lot of fun and really learned a ton. Well, no problem at all. It was really exciting to be able to get physical with some of those demos and really show you the potential that exists in this industry.